California history begins with its geogra geography and regional diversity. As we can see, there are many different regions in California. We will begin our discussion with the four main geographical areas. These are the Sierra or Sierra Mountains, the Central Valley, the Mojave Desert, and the coastline areas. California is unique in that the Pacific Ocean on the west, the Mojave Desert to its south, and the Sierra Mountains on its eastern border kept this area relatively isolated for thousands of years. Thus, major developments such as European contact will not occur in California until the late 1700s, as compared to South America being colonized in the 1500s and the eastern seaboard being colonized and settled in the early 1600s. Continuing with the Sierra Mountains. The Sierra Mountains are important for various historical reasons. First, as it played a role in leading European settlement, it also posed an immense challenge for building the Transcontinental Railroad along with Euro-American settlement. Secondly, while the Sierra served as a refuge for runaway missions during the 1700s, by the 1850s, gold will attract thousands of foreigners from around the world, many of them Euro-Americans from the East Coast. While the gold rush has many times been looked in positive light for attracting people from around the world and around the country. From California Indians' perspective, this will have a detrimental impact on the livelihood of the original peoples of this area. Thirdly, since time immemorial, the snow-capped mountains of the Sierras have been the source of countless rivers, streams, and lakes. Most importantly, it has provided water and irrigation for the Central Valley. Thus, moving on to the Central Valley region of the United States, this area has become the most productive agricultural region in California. Before the 1900s, it used to be a rich woodland area with marshes and a variety of bird and animal life. But today, it has been transformed. Irrigated cropland in the Central Valley yield more agricultural products than any other, world, any other area in the world. By the 1920s, this region's agro-business became an economic giant, enriching many landowners and providing low-wage employment for immigrants from various countries and around the world. We will have European immigrants and immigrants or Euro-American immigrants coming to California from the Midwest and Coast. We'll have Asian immigrants coming by the late 1800s, early 1900s. And then today, in terms of California agribusiness, it is dominated mostly by Mexican and Central American farm workers. The Mojave Desert region. The Mojave Desert region impeded Spanish settlement of California for centuries, as stated earlier. Even after Spanish and later Euro-American settlement of California, only California Indians populated this region, until, of course, air condition was invented. Now, it is part of the Sunbelt region of the southwest of the United States, serving as the site of bioscience, aerospace, and electronics, providing, again, employment for thousands of people. Continuing with the coastline region. As we know, or many of us know, the coastline region provides recreation for thousands of Californians, Californians and tourists. Countless tourists come to California to enjoy tide pools, surfing, sailing, 
the redwoods, etc. In terms of trade, California is at the center of what we call the Pacific Rim. If we reimagine California not as the western edge of North America, but as the center of U.S. Asian trade, it's important. Its importance outweighs the East Coast. Some argue even New York. For example, the goods from the Pacific Rim enter that enter Los Angeles and Long Beach ports surpass the amount that reaches the East Coast from Europe. At the center of the Pacific Rim, California does not only take in material goods and products, but the people of the Pacific Rim also. 40% of all Asian and Pacific Islanders live in California. This, of course, has impacted the cultural makeup of California. Asian ethnic enclaves such as Japantown, Chinatown, Little Manila, and Little Saigon are dotted throughout California's urban and suburban areas. Climate, regional diversity, and industry. Historically, California's climate and regional diversity created five major industries that continue to provide employment opportunities and attracting, again, countless immigrants from different parts of the United States and around the world. While there are many industries that we can mention, historically, the five major industries are real estate, cinema, tourism, agriculture, aviation, and computer science technology. Racial and ethnic diversity. As already As mentioned, mentioned, climate, region, and diversity in industry industry industries. Uh, specifically, specifically, climate employment opportunities attracts millions, millions of immigrants in search of these resources. California continues to be one of the most diverse states in the nation. The population continues to grow. Analysts estimate California's population grows at a thousand a day, half by immigration and half by birth. It is referred to as a population accumulation zone. Despite the billion dollar industries, richness, abundance, and resources, and its uniqueness as a state, California is similar to the rest of the US in that it has a long history of inequality and disparity. While it may be culturally diverse and even and even have a reputation of tolerance, it is not the melting pot utopia that many ask who benefits from the abundant riches and opportunities found in California. The resources that California and Californians possess, are they alloc allocated equally? Does everyone have equal access to these resources? Part of this course will argue that historically, there have been certain groups of people, referred to as the majority, that have advantages in accessing resources, such as employment, while others, minorities, have been disadvantaged at accessing those same resources. These groups have historically been determined by three categories. Number one, race and ethnicity. Number two, class, meaning the rich, the poor, the working class, or working poor. And three, gender, male and female. This is not a matter of opinion. This is fact. The question at hand for our overall discussion during the first half of the semester is why and how. Social and political movements in California. This inequality that has been previously mentioned has given rise to various social and political movements that have advocated for equality, civil rights, women rights, women's rights, workers' rights, etc. For example, out of California, specifically the San Francisco Bay Area, which many people consider the capital of alternative America or oppositional subcultures, it has always had strong labor unions.
Jones. The beat poetry of the 1950s came out of California. Berkeley and the free speech movement, the Black Panther Party, powerful gay rights movements, and the enviro environmental justice movement, just to name a few, originated in the Bay Area. The Central Valley is home to the UFW and farm workers movement that staged the longest labor movement in U.S. history, inspiring labor activists around the country. In addition, as well as other parts of the Southwest, Southwest the Chicano movement took root in Southern California. Brown Berets and other activists struggled for decent housing, education, and police brutality. This is only a few examples of the different social and political movements that we will be looking at during this course. Thus, this is the general direction of the course. The first half of the course will highlight the concrete conditions of various racial and ethnic groups and bring, bring to light their historical experiences in California. We will approach each section by race, class, and gender. We will use history as a framework to guide our discussions that will give us a better understanding of how inequality and racism is persistent and continues to be embedded in our social, economic, and political institutions. The second half of the semester, focus on the various social and political organizations and movements that have addressed these issues and have struggled for a more just, equal, and democratic California.